Cause we love our love in different sizes. I love her body, especially the lies. Time takes its toll, but not on the eyes. Promise me this, take me tonight. Thank you very much, panel, and thank you, Wagner, for that song. Welcome to the Perfect 10 show, where we give you the chance to win £10,000 while we chat about what's happening in sport. What's the kind of money? Is that a woo for the 10 grand? That's a woo for the 10 grand. Well, woo for you. Oh, cheers, that's <laughs> all. What would you do with 10 grand? Gamble. <laughs> Gamble responsibly. Colchester, but more about that later. <laughs> we'll get on to your uh, trip, trips around the country, Anton. First of all, let me to introduce you to our panel today. We have Harris, our fantasy football non-expert. He's rooted to the bottom of the draft league. Harris, how was your <laughs> Sunday? Uh, I didn't have a very good weekend this weekend, I have to say, after Sunday. It was uh, a shambles in the United game, and the draft didn't help. You lost to Dave Irwin, I believe, which... I mean, it's getting lower than that, is it? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Pete, on the other hand, I think your Sunday went pretty well. I, had a, I mean, I would have preferred to have been at the City game and watching United at home, but, you know, I was in the office. There's a good chance to rinse them for how sh** they really are. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was good. What's worse, uh, Man United's performances this season or your haircut? Definitely <laughs> Man United's <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Yeah. You've got the haircut of an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you uh, get your EDL membership? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come on to that later, free show. Uh, Anton, welcome. You've made it back for another week and another Hello, winner. Hello, Sam. Yes, another winner last weekend. That's two weeks in a row now. The dirty doublers come in, and I'll have another one for this weekend. Very tasty indeed. What was Hull like? I heard you went there. <laughs> all. Absolute really? all. Brilliant one that win for Rovers. Good day out. Bit disappointed I didn't get to go to Sea Life Centre the Deep. I've heard that's an absolutely cracking day out, but apart from that. Speaking of someone with personal experience of the Deep, it's actually uh, overrated. So you didn't miss much. (laughs) (laughs) There's that. Don't don't (laughs) visit home. Right, let's move on. We've also got our special guest for today joining us, the king of Twitter. He's better than Evra. He's better than Mendy. It's Johnny Sharples, everyone. (laughs) And we've also got a man who is missing today, but he might be back next week. He sent us a beautiful oh, video so. message. It's Grandad. Let's hear what he's got to say. Go on, Grandad. Hi, perfect ten lads. How the devil are we? Sorry I can't make today's show once again, hey, but I'm otherwise involved. Busy things, busy ram schedule. Hey, got to be tired, though. With me age now, to come for a lie down every now and then. Stuck cricket town. Should send me sound to sleep, no problem. Ha <laughs> ha Boring. I tell you what. Anyway, quick shout out to its special guest, Jordan Sarples. Hey? Believe he's a top notch Twitter personality. Hey? Lovely bloke. But he's a Newcastle United fan. And I'll never forgive Newcastle for taking our Alan Shearer in 94, 95, 96, whenever it were. Forgive me for getting day wrong. But I don't remember, with me age, what I had for me breakfast this morning. Hey? Other than. Kathleen's vagina. <laughs> I'm not frightened. I were like a Jack Russell chasing a yogurt pot right front room. <laughs> Naughty granddad. Hey, take care and have a fantastic show. All the best. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was X rated from granddad, wasn't it? Oh, was just granddad. Uh, that was a bit of a brutal way to start the show. I've really lost my words there. He's, he's made me uh, all shaken. But well, we are giving away this Newcastle United shirt today. Thanks to Johnny, who is a big Newcastle fan. All you have to do at the end of the show, I'm going to ask a question now to Anton, and he's going to give the answer at the end of the show. So the question is, who was Anton's last match on Tinder? Talk about was himself. It, was it A, Rachel, or was it B, Michelle? You, you got a match. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stick around to the end of the show to find out who it was. Only Anton knows, none of us know here, but that's how you can win that Newcastle shirt. Right, let's crack on into today's show. Uh, Johnny, welcome. Uh, we'd like to get you a drink of your choice in exchange for your best drunken story. So first of all, what is the drink of your choice? Well, it's going to be difficult to give a good drunken story because I uh, don't drink. Oh, very oh. sensible. A Newcastle fan that doesn't drink is a bit of a turn up for the books. <laughs> um, What's so the I'm... most flamboyant uh, soft drink you want then? I have a glass of water. 
<laughs> Just like our Gareth Southgate, he knows what I he know. wants. He's a sensible man, right? Harris, I know yeah, Harris, yeah, Harris go and get that. That's why you've dressed up like that today. <laughs> Right, Johnny, while Harris goes and gets you your H2O, very refreshing, um, could you just introduce a bit about yourself and what you do on social media? Yeah, I'm Johnny Sharples, and um, I just f*** about on Twitter, basically. I don't think there's anything more to it than that, just uh, football jokes, just different stuff like that, photoshops, videos, anything I can think of, anything that creeps into my mind that won't put me in prison, basically, <laughs> um, goes on to Twitter. Um, when did you first start your Twitter account, and when did it really take off? Uh, I was like an early, well not an early adopter because it's been around for like 12 years, but um, when the big boom of it came and Stephen Fry was going on and on about it all the time, I was like, I'm going to go and check this out and basically used it as Facebook status updates like I think most people did when yeah. it first started, just like went out last night, no retweets, no favourites, no nothing, <laughs> no replies with my like four followers that I knew from school and stuff um, and then like just carried on doing what I was doing on there and then the 2014 World Cup happened in Brazil and like that's when Twitter was absolutely massive I think um, and everyone was keeping their eye on it all the time keeping like watch what the scores were what was happening the stupid stuff that was happening like uh, James Rodriguez having a grasshopper land on him and people were going crazy for stuff like that um, so I just started messing about with pictures and then like Football Funny started nicking them and Lad Bible started Aww. nicking them um, so I thought there's probably a market for this I could do it myself so I just sort of went out on my own and, and Use my questionable Microsoft Paint skills as it was then, and, and um, created some horrible pixelated pictures, and then slowly got better at it. And then people started, you know, paying a bit more attention to it, and people seemed to enjoy what I find funny. So that's a pretty positive thing to happen, I think. I've got a question for you. When and how did you get the blue tip? Because I'm I'm gonna get one at some point. <laughs> you know, like, um, how do I go about it? I like to just say that my own notoriety, you know, got me noticed, but I applied for it. Um, I sold my soul to Twitter, uh, to the little blue bird, and um, in exchange for a blue tick. Um, so I, I asked about three times, I asked for one, and they turned me down. Um, and it was about the time that Jamie Vardy's lookalike got one. So I was like, I thought about plastic surgery, so you know, find a, you know, make myself look a bit like Danny Drinkwater or something, and try and get a blue tick that way. But in the end, I sort of convinced them, won them round. Um, and got myself a, a blue tick and well, if you don't ask you don't get I know it's got a bit its like Tinder <laughs> well. Harris you've met Jamie Vardy's look like haven't you I actually did once yeah it was after uh, in the Euros and I think I was very drunk at the time and I tried to do an interview with him on my phone so yeah that and, went well and that's how you got the job was it <laughs> yeah well it was, it was in front of uh, my then boss then is here so yeah it was pretty awkward was that after you used to model for Matalan uh, no. I see with, with your attire that you wore today. I mean, thank you, Bobby, for that's you as well. That's all I can say. Can we get a zoom in on those shoes <laughs> there, yeah. Yeah. the cameraman? Absolutely. Yeah. Winkle pickers. <laughs> Flickers. <laughs> right, back to Johnny. Let's get away from Harris's shoes. Um, <laughs> does being verified on Twitter help you with the ladies? Um, <laughs> I've had a girlfriend for like four years, <laughs> um, and I don't think she's as impressed as the blue tick as she is with like. <laughs> me just doing the washing up so yeah. uh, it's not that impressive was she your girlfriend before you got verified oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so um, you know she actually didn't need the blue tick to impress it it was just my natural charisma and <laughs> photo photoshop skills that I think won her over so um, yeah I've never really had to use it for anything other than getting blocked by other people with blue ticks making sure they see my replies to them so um, it, has, it has advantages and downfalls I think on Twitter, there's a lot of abuse that's thrown about. Have you got a funniest troll comment that you've ever had that you could share with us? I mean... Not really, because they tend to... Uh, people, people that troll tend to have terrible senses of humour yeah, um, and don't really know how to put together a decent reply. Uh, so most of the time, it's just people telling me I'm not funny. Um, and, you know, they probably have a point. But, uh, so it's not really a good troll, it's just being honest at the end of the day. So... Um, no, no real, no real favourites. But that's not to encourage anyone else to sort of try and jump on the bandwagon and you know, workshop some good jokes in response to my jokes because they're never as funny as mine. Very good. <laughs> um, you have obviously done thousands of amazing tweets. Go and check out uh, Johnny Sharples on Twitter if you haven't already. Um, have you got kind of a top three tweets or a tweet of, that you're most proud of? Of my own or of yes, other of your own. Um, above the bed. Above the bed frame. <laughs> I like. Um, there was a photograph of Alexandra Mitrovic when he used to play for Newcastle giving Rafa Benitez a hug. I think Rafa, Rafa Benitez had like jumped into his arms, I can't even remember what the match was, but basically it looked like Rafa Benitez was a helium balloon. Um, so I did a joke about that, which I, I love, and um, 
always crack it out every time Mitrovic, well he's left Newcastle now, but every time he sort of cropped up in the news when he scored in the World Cup or when he left for Fulham, um, just retweet my own tweets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's um, the trick to Twitter. Yeah, it's the trick to getting more interactions and stuff, retweet your own tweets, because um, no ones are as good as mine. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just that, I love that one. Um, top three, things, things come and go. Um, I think that's the good thing about Twitter. Things are relevant for such a short period of time that once you get in there, um, they sort of don't last a lifetime. So I've done thousands. But I just, I like um, telling Arsenal fans Dennis Bergkamp's goal against Newcastle was a <laughs> fluke. Um, I love that. I love uh, uh, Wayne Rooney's only got 52 international goals because one of them was an own goal. So just different things around, sort of playing around the same um, just to wind people topic. Up. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not do that on purpose. It just happens. <laughs> right, Harris. Yes. This is us in the spotlight now. I've asked you to come and bring the best tweet that you've ever done, and I've got one of my own. And we're going to get Johnny to rate them out of ten and see whose was better. I mean, my Twitter account is is not the best. The best I've really ever had is there's a band I like called Future Island. Who? Yeah, great band. Check Irrelevant out. band. Um, do you want to plug your Music well, as well. It, no, I'm not allowed to, probably. But um, <laughs> we all, for some reason, we were all dressed in Hawaiian shirts, which, looking back now, is pretty horrendous. And uh, we all took a picture, and then we're quite <laughs> drunk and sent it to the band, and then they retweeted oh. it, and it got 16 retweets, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> right. But <laughs> looking back now, the restraining order might be coming out soon. It's uh, so that's all I can say. <laughs> Not your best. I'm actually just going <laughs> to load up mine. Um, so right. I didn't bring mine framed on my phone. <laughs> Sorry, I've got this. We'll get it on the screen so you can see it. Johnny, what do you think of this? This is it's got this, a, it's is got over a thousand retweets. Oh Jesus Christ! Right. Oh, no. This is when Shakiri had just signed for Liverpool. This Breaking: is Shakiri is not concerned by his lack of playing time at Liverpool. He's happy to play whenever, wherever. That's original. It's quite good. Right. Oh, don't there? encourage it. Don't Here's encourage it. A, a photograph of someone wearing Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> 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 or an actual a reasonably well constructed joke. joke. Right, um, I mean, I haven't given my I haven't given my answer yet. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah you, you've got it. I think. Cheers, uh, you're welcome back on the I show mean, again. Six, Sixteen retweets. Yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of that. Just Thirty wearing, likes or something. Just Small wearing the white shirt. Yeah, yeah. Is that that. Very good, Harris. <laughs> right, back to you, Johnny. Let's talk about Newcastle a bit. Um, oh, when did you first start supporting them, and how did you get into them? Um. I started supporting Newcastle in 1996, so... Um, when they were good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, the glory wor- I'm the worst sort of glory supporter in that um, I've had um, 20, like, 22 years of no glory at all. Um, so you haven't even won the Czech back- trade trophy. No, not back. We won the Intertoto Cup 2006, Scott Parker and his certificate. Don't, yeah, you get a certificate. I know, you got, you got yeah. a little certificate and Scott Parker looked like he'd rather be anywhere else. Um, but yeah, 1996, after Euro 96, um, I was living in uh, Preston, which is up the road. Uh, from Manchester. Um, great night out. Great yeah. night out. Press. Bounced by the ounce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and warehouse, top quality. And um, yeah, I didn't realise how far away Newcastle was. Um, and Alan Shearer scored loads of goals at Euro 96 and then joined Newcastle. So I sort of followed him to Newcastle um, and then regrettably supported them ever since and been through the marginal highs and the low lows um, so if he stayed at Blackburn after Euro 96 I'd probably support Blackburn if he'd gone to Man United I'd probably end up supporting Man United well we wouldn't want that um, no want but that. like New- Newcastle uh, you know we don't have the, the joy of supporting like winning trophies or anything or the you know if I, if he like joined Blackburn I could have gone down the well stayed at Blackburn I could have gone down the road to Ewood Park and watched him there but because he, um, he had the chance to join United did, didn't well, he yeah. yeah my favourite story about that is that Man United bid 12 million quid for him um, when he was at Blackburn which was below the asking price and Jack Walker who owned Blackburn at the time was so annoyed by a 12 million pound bid he went and bid like 3 million pounds for Eric Cantona in response <laughs> like if you're going to do me I'm going to do you but yeah um and Man United, uh, Blackman also offered him the chance to be player manager at Blackman at the time when he was 25 to try and keep him there. But like I say, if he'd stayed there, I'd have supported Blackman and gone to watch him probably. But he joined Newcastle and we got all the, the joy of being terrible but getting the good <laughs> jokes. And you know, Newcastle's a fun place to go and the supporters are always a good laugh. So it is. And so, as a resident Blackburn fan, can you describe Alan Shearer in one word? Special. Special, that'll do. <laughs> right, what are Newcastle's and your expectations for Newcastle this season? Um, well, given our biggest summer signing was a department store for £90 million, <laughs> pounds, I don't think um, we're going to pull up any trees this year. Um, so just, it, it's little. horrible. It's horrible to say you want to be 17th in the league, but I think that's got to be our realistic expectation. you just got to hope that 
you know, teams around us drop points and we can pick up here and there against against the teams. Again, well, we've got one point against Cardiff, but against the likes of like Burnley and, and Huddersfield and teams like that, you've got to hope that we can get a few wins and get some points elsewhere and hopefully finish 17th and anything above that's a, you know, a bonus. But 10th last season was beyond, you know, first season back in the league. We didn't really improve the squad that much. Uh, it was just um, an incredible achievement for Benitez and the club and hopefully we can sort of Anywhere between 10th and 17th, first would be ideal, but you've got to be realistic and be the most ardent, deluded Newcastle fan, I'd say that might be a bit beyond us. But, you know, just stay in the league and put in some good performances that we can be proud of and, and get rid of Mike Ashley at some point would be a huge bonus. The thing that has been catching our eye regarding Newcastle uh, this month has been the Salomon Rondon song. Yes, stunning. stunning. Absolutely incredible. Oh, well, I can't, I can't hear genius. It um, I think we showed it on the show last week, actually. And we're Maybe we'll play a clip of it again. Oh, Two weeks will. in a row, it's that good. That's what we're doing Get that many you. streams, they'll be number one. Do the deal with West Brom. Get yourself a goal, son. Rafa's bro in Rondon. Don't a deal with West Brom. Get yourself a goal, son. Right, Johnny, thoughts on that? Do you think it'll uh, go around St James' Park? I think the problem with that is it's uh, probably a bit, bit too bit too long to get the you know. If anything, it's it too good. Exists, that's the yeah, I think I, all credit to him. He's done a good parody song, but I don't think it's one for the um, for one the for the terraces. Yeah, yeah. Right. but uh, all credit to him. He's um, you know done a good song. Rondon. Well, bad effort. Should should Rondon be starting? Um, once once he's got his fitness up, he didn't really have much of a pre season. Um, and I think you've got a what. Benitez did in the first match against Tottenham was a bit weird. He brought Rondon on, obviously powerful, good in the air, and took Richie off, who's our best deliverer of the ball, yeah. and put Atsu on, who, you know, got the speed, got technique, got can dribble, um, is, an, is a great winger, but his final products into the box isn't the best. So it was a bit of a weird one. But Hosselu probably deserves a, his first two performances have been decent, um, but in the end, he'll probably drop to third and possibly fourth choice striker. Mm. Uh, Rondon will probably start and then. Perez behind him ideally and I can see that working I think um, Perez, Perez is uh, it's a workhorse isn't it yeah, Perez is, is but he's, he's probably, probably one of the you know best Newcastle players that we've had for, I thought he was brilliant at the down. back end of last season he chips in with some goals and assists that were crucial really mm. he's just, he's just, he just seems like he really like, like he's had the chance to chances to leave I think he could have joined Spurs a couple of years ago <laughs> Barcelona apparently had a look at him when they were trying to find sort of a lad that'd be happy to sit on the bench. Um, I don't think he's ever going to be good enough to play for Barcelona, but he's, for Newcastle, he's, he's a dream. Um, but him and Rondon, I can see working really well. Yeah. It's just when he, when he's fit enough to scratch, then it'll be. I can see him going straight in. Right, let's wrap up this Newcastle chat. This is, of course, the perfect ten show where you can win ten thousand pounds by playing our perfect ten game on the Sportsman dot com. Johnny, we've got a little perfect ten challenge for you. I'd like you to name your favourite 10 Newcastle players. It's difficult to narrow it down to 10. Um, probably start with the obvious in Alan Shearer. We've already talked about him a little bit. Probably the best player to ever have played for Newcastle. Yeah. Shiro. Top scorer. The whole reason I support Newcastle, um, which arguably is a bad thing as well. So you couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, shouldn't be on the list. Nobby Solano, probably another good one as well. Uh, Philippe Albert scored my favourite ever Newcastle goal. Is that the chip uh, against United? Chip against United, 5-0. My favourite, it's probably one of the first matches of uh, me being a Newcastle supporter and it obviously all went downhill from just a 5-0 win. Uh, Rob Lee used to play for Newcastle. All these are going to be from like the, the mid-90s. Um, Nikos Dabizas, who um, got fouled by Dennis Bergkamp when Dennis Bergkamp scored that fluke against Newcastle. Uh, Laurent Robert and David Ginola, two good left-wingers, um, both French, both Laurent magnificent. Uh, Les Ferdinand, him and Shearer up front together. It was only one season, but could have been so much better if they kept them together. Uh, Oberfemi Martins, I absolutely adore because he was just a ridiculous football. He could just smack it hard and do a somersault and that was so basically all. Yeah, so yeah, just a dream, living the dream. And um, probably Jonathan Woodgate maybe or Shea Given actually. We'll Shea, Shea Given. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've taken a penalty against him and he saved it which again could rule him out of this list. But um, <laughs> Good player, should have probably left Newcastle a few years before he did. He He's did well at City of, when it came to us. Yeah, really good. but he was such a good shot stopper. Um, He's been with Arsenal a lot, wasn't he? Like, yeah, like, always yeah. linked with Arsenal. Got his move to City, only lasted a little bit. Joe Hart obviously came through just afterwards, but he um, just a really good servant for Newcastle and probably his loyalty in the end 
was his undoing. He could have, could have gone on to better things elsewhere. Very good. That was 10, wasn't it? I think we Very got there. Well. It, it was 11 because I mentioned Jonathan Woodgate mm. as well. That um, wouldn't be a bad Newcastle team now, would it? Those 11 um, it would be top heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, even Philippe Albert was an attacking centre back, so just Jonathan Woodgate stood on his own. You could have Solano filling in at Philippe uh, Yeah, Solano, try and get Lauren Robert to track back would be um, yeah, need a stronger Jack minded man than me. Ginola, Martins, Ferdinand, Shira, Shira. Shira. <laughs> <laughs> Solano. You wouldn't need a defence. I'd get Rob Lee to just stand there. Do what I can. Right, let's move on to slightly more serious matters. Um, not sure if you've noticed this this season, but Mind Charity have had their logo on the back of every football league show this season, which is a brilliant initiative. Uh, Johnny, I know that mental health is something that's pretty close to your heart. Um, could you share your personal experience with these? Yeah, um, my older brother, uh, Simon, um, took his own life in 2014, just before Christmas. Um, obviously, it's a doesn't even have to be at that time of year but um, Christmas is a huge family gathering time to be together and, and to lose my brother at that point of year he's one of the you know why I got into football to begin with he's a massive influence on sort of my formative years of being a football fan tried to get me to switch my allegiance to Preston but didn't work because he couldn't convince Alan Shearer to join Preston as well um, so I stuck it out with Newcastle and I still went to matches with him at Deepdale and stuff like that um, so he was a massive influence on my life and to lose him um, like that with sort of no real indication of what was going on um, was just a huge tragic event and obviously since then it's been sort of a learning experience over the past four years of, of what charities are out there and what sort of funding there is to mental health services and things like that so it's a real positive to see you know football the football league take on such a you know huge step to partner up with a charity like Mind. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so the sportsmen are going to donate £100, Johnny, to a charity of your choice. Which charity would you like this money to go to? Um, so I'd like it to go to a charity called Calm. They're a men's mental health charity. Um, and they're the sort of real sort of driving force behind a lot of the stuff that we see out there today. They did the, um, the statues on top of the This Morning studio on the South um, Bank in London yeah, at the start of the year. So they did that and they, they sort of got good links with different people. Um, and they're really focused on men's mental health, which is obviously a huge thing. Um, suicide's the biggest killer of men under the age of 50, and 75% uh, of suicides are, are by men. So they're really driving, you know, change in that area, you know, working with the government and stuff like that to put better things in place. So, and I, I know from, you know, experience of speaking to the people that work for the charity that they'll put that money to really good use um, and help people. Yeah, that's really good. If you fancy donating as well as the sportsmen are, we're going to put a link in the description below. So click that if you want any information or want to donate at all, and uh, we'll see how much money we can raise. Right, let's move on to the Premier League this weekend. It was certainly an interesting weekend, wasn't it, guys? Uh, Manchester United were in the headlines. Harris, I can see you grimacing already. Yeah. Paul Scholes in the headlines. Mina Raiola's in the headlines. Just talk about what's going on. I think, first off, Paul Pogba needs to take a serious look at his agent. I think what he's come out and done, already when the club's getting hard enough time doing that, is just not helping things. So you don't think Pogba's fueling this agent talk, though? Do no, think, I think... I you think, think, don't think at all? No, me, 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 Mina Raiola has a reputation for a reason, and I think like he's done this... He probably did this with Pogba, actually, at Juventus, before he got his move to United. He used to you know, whore him out to the rest of Europe, and I think... He's, he's, so now it's different when he no, wants to leave United. No, no, if you let me finish, I'll just say There's four whores uh, over here. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think, like, the, the, press, the press basically have been waiting for Mourinho to lose his first match of the season. They, were, they were loving it, absolutely loving it. Well, you were a shambles, of think, course. No, we'll come, we'll come on to the game later, Pete. But I will say... <laughs> Awful. I got him talking. But what I will say is, I think Paul Pogba, he, he came out after the last game and came out with his comments about getting a fine. I don't know what he was trying to achieve with that. I think he's just telling the truth. Uh, shush. Um, and then what I will say is, after that, he comes out after the, the Brighton shambles. And it's a, it's a, basically, that's, after that kind of result at Man United, they need to really sort of tell the fans, tell the media that, you know, what happened isn't on. They're going to buckle down and work hard to avoid it. Having that sort of reaction is not going to help things. Especially when he's our you know, standing captain at the moment. It's, it's a disgrace. Pete, go on, it's your turn to say what you think about any other than It's just funny. It's just funny. It's so funny. You won't find a big club around the world that is in more turmoil than Manchester United, and I'm loving every single I mean, I think it. people need to calm down on that. It's, it is one defeat. I think, no, I think it's... And it fits the current think, media narrative. I don't think it's that at all. I think you look, I'm talking more as a broad sense. You've got the CEO or whatever Edward was done does is undermining Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho's saying a different story to the person who's his boss. Your team is still really bad at football. 
Um, and it's just really funny. No, I think you have to take it into account. We did come second last year. Obviously, yeah, that's not right, first. Yeah. The man, that's not big you enough. You finished 19 I points think behind. there is obviously an issue between what happened in the summer. I think Gary Neville said it well on Sky Sports last week. I couldn't agree with him more that I think when you hire a manager like Mourinho, uh, the, you know, it is, he is a short-term manager, essentially. You're, Check you're, he, he, wants, he wants his 29-year-olds. He wants, he wants them to be there, not necessarily to coach them, but to say, you go out on the pitch, you follow my instructions, I'm going to win. Is that because and he I can't think, coach them? No, he can. Who uh, was the last player that he improved? Oh, I'd say if you even just look at Man United, uh, Jesse Lingard's come on three times the probably was from Mourinho signed. Uh, came to United. But I will say that I think if you're going to hire Mourinho, you need to back him. Because you can't go half on it or it's just going to end up in a disaster. I He's mean, going half on it, though. No, it's not. He is. It's pathetic. Why? why what, what, it's tiresome. Why? Feels like you've been reading too many newspapers and actually watching what's going Johnny, on. Johnny, what are your views on Man United? The football the speaks for itself, and you know that football on Sunday was absolutely shambles. The, the, the team played badly, but you can't hold Marina responsible for Eric Bailly for literally forgetting how to run. Do you know what I mean? Or kicking the ball out of play or diving into tackles. That's not Marina's fault. Harry, That's calm down. Problem. Johnny, I want to hear your views. A, a Twitter expert, what would you make of this? Uh, I think they've spent, they've spent quite a lot of money, whether they've spent it on the right players. You look at the centre backs that started, and they spent you know, 30 million quid on each of them. Yeah, that is true. And um, you, you see if there's money out there for better centre backs at cheaper prices, then there probably is, and he's still not happy with him. Um, and they're all, they're, all, they're all good players, it's whether it's just, you know, although I've not seen much of Lindelof, by he's shown in fits and starts that he's a good defender. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and you've got the best goal, well, one of, if not the best goalkeeper in the world at the club. So ten goals conceded in his last fourteen shots. Then I don't sound like the best keeper in the goal. I don't think you can too much into that. What's that from the start of the World Cup? Yeah. yeah, he's in my draft team. I'll read into it all I want. <laughs> I'll take him off you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there's, there's the defense. The defense has been an obvious problem for a long time. When you're still starting. Valencia, who is, is he's all right, a, a, an orthodox right back, but I don't think any other top club in the world would have him as their first choice. Yeah, um, and then you've got Ashley Young, I know Luke Shaw's come into it, and Luke Shaw has the potential still. He's 23 now, isn't he? And we're still yeah. talking about him like he's 18. Bigger than me. He's, he's a, I think he's shown enough when he was younger that he'll be a good player. So it'll be a bit um, it'll be interesting to see how the defence copes when they let whoever they want to let. Join joins, whether that's under Mourinho or Zidane or some of the some managers. Well, as, as, as a United fan, I think the way you've got to analyse it is if you look at our forward line in midfield, I think that's as good as anyone. I think our defence is not a title-winning defence. It's, it's not. Awful. It's, it's, like, it's like you were saying about our fullbacks. You can't have Ashley Young and Valencia as your first-choice fullbacks and win the Premier League. Right, that's, that's, that's enough of Man United. Let's leave it there. Uh, let's move on to the other side of Manchester. Manchester City documentary on Amazon Prime. Pete, I know you're beaming. What did you think of it? It, it's just it's so fascinating um, I don't think you, you get it in America I think you, it's you get to see like the inside you get to see what the chairman's talking about they talk the CEO, CEOs you know CEOs they talk about who they want to sign but then you also see like if, if you've seen it you see like proper on the training you see them in the changing rooms how they are how they react you see what a good person Gu- Pep Guardiola is that's oh, right he is fantastic I love you Joseph Pep Guardiola um, but it's just it's just great and for City fans obviously last year we got 100 points we were just incredible to watch and to relive it with even more insight is just phenomenal I do find the whole thing very self gratifying I mean it, from, from what I've I've not actually seen a whole episode which is right. a bit oh, so <laughs> <laughs> right and that's the end of that if, 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 you, let, if, if you let me finish but what I, what I have I've not read, watched it but what I have read is that it does overlook key emissions from the season like I think it, it doesn't really cover the Liverpool defeat that's, in Champions that's League that's the point I was going to make I do think um, there was, it was diluted yeah, I, think, I think Mourinho made comments that it was disrespectful to, to some of the teams and managers and the no, way but it was Mourinho gouges people's eyes so you know, it was disrespectful issue. And, um, so I don't know I don't, and again like you said it was quite American I do find it quite I don't know the whole thing well, you've not watched it so how can you City are a brand it's modern day football they're going to market themselves I agree they didn't show about Liverpool the defeat in the Champions League what we all really wanted to see in the change rooms after yeah. they kept away from that but as a football fan the access you get the, and the insight what you get is fantastic Second to but as a manager would you want that when you were in charge I mean I know City won the league last year so it all worked out well but say if there was any turmoil would you want those cameras in your and around your dressing room 
I think it's just something with modern day football of this scale that you have to accept now and beyond the blank checkbook that is Manchester City it's a fantastic documentary Right, let's move on to another sport and what else is trending in sport this week Tyson Fury uh, got Billy Joe Saunders to throw chicken at Deontay Wilder and his crew in Nando's. Was it a full chicken? Half chicken, I believe. I don't know, really. Anton, what's your order from Nando's? Lemon and (laughs) Hughes! That is awful. Johnny, Nando's. One word. What, what I order or just in general? (laughs) (laughs) What do you think? It doesn't cater very well to vegetarians. Yeah. No. So veg- I think, I think that was veg- more than one word. That was more. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Pete, any views on this? I mean, what a video. Um, I mean, it's just, I think that's just going to be leading up to the big fight, which will be Fury Wilder in about November time, I think. It will be, I think you'll see more and more daft stuff like this. Like you saw it when they were actually in the ring together. They were talking, like, they are very respectful, but I do think it's, you're going to get more and more antics, I think is what you can call it, um, leading up to it just because they're both big personalities and they're both going to try and promote the fight and get as much money as they want. I think it's going to be a, a great fight and a great build-up for sure. Um, Anton, what else has caught your eye this week? Well, I've been following the third test match in the series with India and unfortunately England were beaten this time. Which convincingly. T- convincingly, yes, I must say, which takes it to... Skittle. 2-1 to England now in the series and Virat Kohli I've sung his praises on this show before he was absolutely exceptional again another 100 in the second best player in the world by far the best is. batsman in the we, world we've said far. it and he's getting up there with Ganguly with Ganguly Tendulkar the greats he's, he's really really progressing and to me he is the best batsman in the world yep. right now Harris, you're looking a bit vacant. Sorry, the cricket comes in the you know conversation. I'm just gone. What does the umpire <laughs> do when there's a wide ball in cricket? He does the Sachin. Oh, oh he's so surprised as all there. How do you give a six? I don't know, Pete. We don't need to go into that. He passed the first test. We'll let him do that. <laughs> oh, nearly, nearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not far off. <laughs> um, <laughs> very far off. <laughs> <laughs> Anton, I also believe you've got a few views on a certain paint job that's going on uh, in East Anglia. Well, yes, this is the story that Norwich have painted the away dressing room pink in order to, re- uh, to reduce testosterone in the, the away opponents. And very American, though. Very American, and all I can say, game's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Would, would I be intimidated or put off by a pink dressing room? No. Would you, Harris? I'd enjoy it, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd enjoy it. I'd lap it up. It'd give me more reason to go out there and beat them and stick an odd tackling straight away. Why? Right, because the dressing room is pink? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you also seen the news about Everton this week? Oh, is this with the Angry Birds? Angry Birds. I'm not talking about your Tinder page. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you've got three characters that you can play with. You've got Cheng Tosin, Gilfie Sigurdsson, Theo Walcott. Nobody really wants to play with them on a football pitch. I don't know why you want to play with them on a game. Um, Anton, I'll let you have your line for this, please, because I believe that the game is well and truly. Game's gone. Thank you. Everyone knows a good catchphrase. Gone. <laughs> Johnny, will you be downloading Angry Birds to play with Theo Walcott? That sounds rude. But <laughs> <laughs> um, you VR at? Oh, probably not, no. Even if it was a Newcastle version. Yeah. Is that, is that just modern football summed up now? Modern football. Yeah, I think you've got to think for kids. Like, you know, they, well, I think they like Angry Birds. You're going to get allegations saying the kids want to play with Theo Walcott now, Harris. I think they're liable. Think they're liable. Crossovers between football clubs and computer games is anything new. It's just it's a bit weird. Yeah, I think for us, it's, it's not aimed at us, is it? That's the thing. You, you've seen the designs, though, and if you looked at them three Angry Birds, would, would you know it's three football <laughs> players? No. No, no chance. Absolutely not. No chance. And we're going to wrap up this little section on top trends with another boxing match that's going on, going on this week. It is YouTube sensation KSI taking on Logan Paul in Manchester. Wow. Right, I know you've got some strong opinions on this, guys. So can we just explain what it actually is first? Sam? I mean, no, you've got It's a boxing before. match between two amateur fighters. Well, they're, um, no, no, they're YouTubers, they're, YouTubers, they're not amateur YouTubers, yeah. fighters, yeah. I've been told. Uh, and it's going to be the probably the most viewed boxing match this year. Were you saying which is why we're talking about it. Harris? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm really qualified to put any opinion on it. It's just I don't understand how it's a thing, really. Like, just two YouTubers... I'll give you a little bit of background. So, KSI's got 19 million subscribers on So, what, what does he do exactly on he, YouTube? Films and he's an internet personality, much like our own. Yeah, we're going to be seeing you in boxing. Yeah, it's the same. I think that's where the similarities between me and K 
KSIN. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the Logan match. Paul's got 18 million subscribers, so it's a combined reach of about 30. I just keep people. thinking of uh, him who sang Gangnam Style. Is he not called so, KSI? I, I oh, thought, si, I thought he yeah. was called KSI. Right? I don't know. He'd that would be a box. massive fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, millions footwork. of people are going to be watching. It's actually £7.50 to watch this wow. time around. So this is on like, Sky Sports or something, and you pay to watch it? You pay on YouTube, I think. Oh, yeah, so you pay on YouTube. Yeah, yeah it's YouTube Watch and I'm take in place in Manchester. Business. KSI says if he beats Logan Paul, he fancies up taking on Rio Ferdinand. He gave that interview <laughs> to Seb in a Sportsman exclusive. What do we make of that? Rio Ferdinand's boxing career went down as well as his last few years of Man United. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, Rio Ferdinand should just stick to being on telly. He's like he lost his football skills. He's not going to be good at boxing. Stop it, Rio. He's dating an absolute worldie. Yeah, he is. Right, end of. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's enough views on the KSI Logan Paul. Now we're going to wrap up this with our predictions last week I think we did okay I think we all right, kind of back to Chelsea win against yeah. Arsenal the draw oh Harris got nil point but we're now moving on to this week's game the main game in focus is Manchester United v Spurs go do Spurs I'd like to go around and take a little score prediction from everybody and then we'll update the leaderboard let's start with the Man United fan who no doubt is going to back a Man United win it's Harris you must be psychic, Simon. Um, psychic, Simon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can make a bit of money on the side. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Park the best performance and a one 0 win for Man United, oh. and I'll be very happy with that. Oh god. Play I'm going to go with, with I think United's turmoil will continue. Turmoil. I think Spurs look good at the weekend. Um, three one Spurs. Harry Kane, he's got his goal in August. He's going to get some more. I used to be psychic too. I didn't say that. Johnny, what do you make of this game? How do you see it going? Um, yeah, Mourinho's part of the bus, but I can see them scoring. Um, but I can see Spurs scoring as well. So I'd say 1-0. 1-1. Yeah, on the fence. I'm going to agree with that. 1-1. One, one. On the fence. I'm going to say a really dull, boring Monday night football. 0-0. Nil, nil. Oh. As dull as I am. Yes. Right, let's move on. <laughs> That's hard to do. <laughs> We've got Wagner back again. Oh, this is my hat. He's back for another wager. Just play the tape. Hello, perfect damn guys. Stupid West Ham ruined by Wagner last week. Bring back David Moyes. This week's Wagner wager is Arsenal, Everton and Huddersfield. All to win, 7 to 1. Somebody else, round everyone else. You watching your back like you can't relax. You trying to be cool. You look like a fool to me. Tell me, why do you ever go and make things so complicated? <laughs> you sat down in the office, didn't you? Oh, oh, that is incredible. incredible. I'm brilliant. It, it's every, better every week. Yeah, really? Really? Every single week is better. Make great again. The hits just keep coming. And I don't, to come on the show. I don't know how to add to that, so I'm going to throw this over to Anton. Your dirty double landed again. It did. It, it landed last weekend, and I'm back with some more this weekend. And... I agree with Wagner for what for one of the picks this week. <laughs> oh dear, I that's not agree with him, is it? <laughs> the first part of the double is Huddersfield at home to Cardiff. I'm going with a Huddersfield win. I know I know they were pretty terrible at the back last week, Pete, against City. But most people are. But they're gonna have had a rocket up the ass from another Wagner this week. Um, <laughs> Wagner, will, David, will have, had this, <laughs> <laughs> will have had this down at start of the season as three points at home to Cardiff. Got to get it. He's got to get it for me. And they're, they're priced around five to four at the moment. The other part of the double this week is from Colchester. And Colchester beat Crew 6-0 on Tuesday night. Crew have uh, refunded some of the away supporters, Simon, haven't yes, they? Yes, they certainly have. They refunded Game's all of gone. the away Game's supporters. Game's gone from John. <laughs> <laughs> you see in your catchphrase. 158 Crew supporters went down or up to Colchester. I'll let me look at a map. Uh, and they've had their tickets refunded because they were sh- it was it was a convincing performance from Colchester and I've seen them play some really good stuff already this year. They're at home to Northampton who lost away at Morecambe mid midweek. Morecambe's first points for the season. Morecambe's still favourites with the bookies for relegation. And what I will add, Morecambe were down to ten men in the last ten minutes. Keeper got sent off. One of the midfielders, Alex Kenyon, went in net for the last five minutes. Two brilliant saves. If you get to see them, have a look. But they're also priced at around five to four, six to five, which gives the Double four to one it pays. Have a do on that. We've had two winners in the last two weeks. Hopefully more of the same. I'll be having a do. Thank you. Thank and you. Good night.
<laughs> right, Anton, thanks very much for that. No problem. You can get on <laughs> that bet in the description below. Anton's got back to back winners. The best ball he's <laughs> right, ever Johnny. been in. He's gone. He's gone. Johnny. Game's gone. Guess 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 gone, innit? Right, anyway, I'll tell people to back yeah. your bet. Get on that in the link in the description Good below if you fancy it. I certainly fancy it. And now it's time. Do I need to introduce this anymore, Pete? No, I'm going to introduce this. It's the best part of the show. Producer, can we run the jingle? It's Pete's Tweet of the Week. This is a coincidence because of our guest. He a coinky dink. A coinky dinky, oh. Mr. Anton. Um, now, the tweet that I've chosen this week is a phenomenal, phenomenal bit of work. It's from City's new documentary, and Johnny put the scene of David Brent or the musical, like everything over the top of it, and it works perfectly. And you just have to go and watch it. Johnny, have you it's paid Pete Saints or? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Tweet. Well, 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 22,000 retweets. Well, not enough. 2 million views. That's got to be up there with one of you, some of your best work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my tweet of the week. Roll the jingle again. It's Pete's tweet of the week. <laughs> right, when, when are the sportsman boys going to start pulling out numbers like that? In fact, you can catch Johnny Sharples on Saturday night on the Sportsman Twitter because these guys aren't good enough. We've got in some professional help. You can watch the Liverpool you know. Brighton game, I think, on Twitter with our man Johnny Sharples. So catch that, and we might be producing some good tweets. Um, for Harris, once. for once, Harris, you're in the spotlight now. Ooh, how I like it. Fantasy football, yes. right? Your bottom of the draft. I don't know why we're still coming to you from a I mean, two you horrendously unlucky defeats. We can't, we can't two defeats. That. If you don't pull your finger out soon, we're going to have to get a better guest on. Um, <laughs> so this is it. Long what are comparisons on. with Man United? I think. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Is, it? Yeah. Anyway, oh, sorry, where were you, sorry? Save your job. Um, okay, this week, I have gone for, pardon if I pronounce that, Paul Merson, uh, James Tau... Tarkovsky. See, there you go. Thank you, Anson. You always the, there. The Tarkovsky. Yeah, excellent. Um, I think he's already had one clean sheet and scored this season. I think Burnley are playing Fulham on the weekend. I fancy him to keep it tight, and you can bring him in for five million pounds. I think it'd be a really good addition to your, your back line. Uh, who are you going to bring in in the draft? Seeing as you need to make some changes. I am desperate for a forward, but I can't see any value at the moment. So. Would you like to know my tip for the fantasy Premier League at the moment? Yes. The top point scorer so far, I think, still available in our draft anyway. Oh. Cardiff goalkeeper really? Neil Etheridge. Well, he's, he's two penalty points. saves yeah. in two games. No one snapped him up yet. Neil what Etheridge do doesn't even yeah. pick Neil Etheridge to play. He stepped yeah, him off his own team. It. It's crazy. And so would you bring him in? Do you know what country he's from, Sam? I think you Oh, is he from the Philippines? He's from the Philippines. I think he's the first. He's the first. To play. I feel like he knew that. The first player in the Premier League <laughs> Why from the I Philippines. Think he was Welsh. I don't That's know. quite a bit of Yeah, that's probably it. He's too good at football. Go Racist. <laughs> You're amazing. Racist. Racist. That's what the hair's doing now. <laughs> 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 right, I'm let's... not a racist. <laughs> I just like to say I'm not a Tory. <laughs> right, now let's move on to our Harris v Anton challenge. We stole this idea from Ant v Deck on Saturday Night Takeaway and we're proud of it. Last week it was a tense game of heads <laughs> up when it ended in a four all draw, which gave them mm. a point each. And with the start of the US Open coming up, we decided to go to the tennis table. Ooh. The table tennis table. The ultimate holiday sport. Are you any good? I've not been on holiday for a while, so I could be a bit rusty. Harris, do you fancy your chances? I played Anton Taylor Tennis for 40 years quite good, and in these shoes, I think. Oh, oh, so, we'll see how I get on. All I can do is try. Right, it's do. first to five points. Let's get into the action. Let's get underway. It's first a, to five. It's a real game. pleasure to be here. It's Harris. Harris to serve first. I thought you only liked golf. Uh, I, I, I love golf. Scotland's got some beautiful, beautiful golf courses. Um, but I, I do dabble in the Oval Office and a bit of table tennis. It's, uh, it's one all, I it's believe. One, isn't it one all? Um, you know, we're going to build a wall. Do you think the net is high enough or does it need to be higher? It needs to be higher. Ten foot, ten foot ahead. <laughs> Donald Trump went quite Indian there for, us, <laughs> for a moment. You know, we bit... <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I'm, I'm not actually sco- sure what the score is now, Simon. Uh, I don't know if you can help me with this. It's 2-2. Two, two. I don't think you focus much on numbers anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I get other people to do that for me. This is a very tense game. It's very tense. Didn't get the we'll replay the point. Stick a for the rules. Replay the point. It's Anton, it's Harris, it's Anton, it's Harris, it's Anton, it's Harris, it's Anton, it's Harris. It's so intense. Oh my gosh. What is going on? What is going on here? This is just ridiculous. Harris. Oh, he's got the A. I don't know what Anthony was doing there. This is it. Match point. Match point to Harris. Oh, he's just... Oh! This is incredible stuff. Trust me on that. This is the best table tennis I've ever seen. Oh, he's gone too long. It's too, too long. It's another match point for Harris. Oh! I'm going to let Anton have that point. <laughs> that is a point to Anton. It's not. It's match point. <laughs> it's match point to Anton. Se- seven six to Anton. Trust, trust me. I know all the numbers. We are we are bored, so we're doing sudden death. We are into the sudden death. There's a woman walking across the back of the court. We have the streaker. Uh, <laughs> This is enthralling stuff. Nobody's making any mistakes. This is incredible. Unlike your presidency. I would know. Oh, and the winner from Blackburn is Anton. Thank you. Congratulations. What a game of table tennis that was. And he so- does not, he does not look happy. No, it's fine. No comment. The John McEnroe with table tennis. Yeah, well, <laughs> there was the knee through the racket at some point there. He was, was getting heated. That does give Anton a 2-1 lead in the series. Harris, can you come back from this? Uh, who knows? We'll have to tune in next week, won't they? Anton, lead in the series. Yeah, comfortable. I think Buckies have stopped taking bets now when we're in the league. Thank you. Some are paying out, I've heard. Yeah, Paddy Power. Paddy Power, they always, power, they always yeah. pay out there. You're getting paid by Paddy Power to say that? No. <laughs> right, let's move on to the perfect 10 predictions. Of course, you can play along on the website, thesportsman.com, and you're in with a chance of winning £10,000 if you get them all right. Johnny, you're in a little bit of pressure. Ray's got five, Lee Croft got three. That's the score you've got to beat. So we'll run through the fixtures, just give us the win, draw, win result, and why you've picked them. Bournemouth v Everton is the first fixture. Should go with Everton, Everton to win that one. Yep, that's fine. Huddersfield beat Cardiff. Draw, we'll go with a draw because... Uh, Backing against team. Anton's dirty dog. Sorry. It's all right, it's all right. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> one of us is a winner. <laughs> Southampton Leicester. Draw, we'll go with a draw. Blackburn v Brentford. Now be careful, we've got a Rovers fan next hey, That's a tough Bradley one. Bradley me playing well. He is, yeah, he's in They've super got uh, Adam Armstrong from Newcastle, so I'm going to go, mm. go back, back to Blackburn. Blackburn. Mini Shearer, I think a few of the fans have mentioned. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Bolton v Sheffield United. Uh, draw, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll go with a draw. You love a draw. Norwich uh, v Leeds. Leeds on flying form, top of the league. Uh, but Norwich's pink dressing room. Oh, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to consider that factor. You're that setting one. off again now. <laughs> we'll, go with, uh, we'll go with a Leeds win, Bielsa ball. QPR v Wigan. Wigan, because Steve McLaren manages QPR. <laughs> <laughs> that is a re- if he's still in charge. Yeah. Right, Doncaster v Portsmouth in League One. Uh, Got with Portsmouth. Portsmouth started the season quite well. I think. Yeah, four wins in a row. Plymouth v Peterborough. Peterborough also won four in a row. Yeah, but we're going to go with Plymouth. We're going to have a, an upset there. Oh, Scunthorpe v Barnsley to finish off with. We'll go with Barnsley. Barnsley, thanks yeah, very good. much, Johnny, for your perfect ten. You can play along on the website, and we'll see how Johnny got on next week. To we'll see where he's placed on the leaderboard. Right, it's time to give away this wonderful Newcastle shirt. Anton, you're on the spot again. So earlier in the show we asked, what was the name of Anton's latest Tinder match? Was it A, Rachel, or B, Michelle? Anton, can you reveal the answer? I can confirm the name of my last match on Tinder was in fact Michelle. Oh. Yes! It's 41! Oosh! Ooh, he loves the Mitchell <laughs> Michelle, well, how, how, what wide range you've got set there? What's the age range you've got? Oh, I don't have no range. <laughs> That was the Perfect 10 show. Next week you can get involved again where we'll have up-and-coming magician and Derby fan Luca Galone on the show. And you can also see more of Johnny Sharples on our Twitter on Saturday night. Right, thanks for joining me, everyone. Thank you very much.
Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe below and ding that notification bell to get our latest uploads into your inbox.